Dr. Jennifer West here. I wanted to cover a veterinary perspective of coronavirus now that we have the first positive tested symptomatic animal. Yesterday, a tiger at the Bronx Zoo was tested positive for COVID-19, what causes coronavirus. And this was suspected to have come from a human worker at the zoo, probably one of the caretakers of the tiger exhibit. They noted that multiple tigers and apparently possibly some lions as well were coughing and having symptoms that were concerning for a respiratory illness. Only one tiger was tested because the zoo veterinarians did explain you need to do anesthesia on a tiger in order to, do, to collect these tests. And that is a big ordeal. Not to mention tests are limited. Humans can't even get them. So we're trying not to test a lot of animals. Now, my sources today include the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, NIH, and the World Health Organization. I do also have a couple of um, preliminary studies that I'll include in my link um, if you scroll down of some studies that are not yet peer reviewed, not yet fully published, but do rise concerns that other species may be able to carry this disease. The really, there are a lot of really big unknowns with coronavirus. So let me start out with when coronavirus was first documented. First cases of coronavirus erupted in Wuhan, China in December of 2019. These studies showed that people were breaking out with a new type of pneumonia and it was linked to a virus. By January of 2020, this virus was declared to be coronavirus, COVID-19, and was declared a global pandemic. We've had global pandemics in the past related to flus. One of the most deadly and terrifying for the 20th century was the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu actually took my grandmother's sister. The Spanish flu was very, very deadly to the young, under five-year-olds, and the elderly. The current coronavirus mostly affects the elder population, immune-compromised individuals, but it has also killed younger populations. So to look back a bit on other coronaviruses that have started in animals and spread to humans, some that you'll definitely um, recall the names of include SARS, so Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. This was first reported in Asia in February of 2003. It spreads in more than two dozen countries in North America, as well as to South America, Europe, and Asia. And it ultimately took until, um, it took part of that year to contain the outbreak. But since 2004, there actually haven't been any known cases of SARS reported anywhere in the world. It vanished. Another big one that you've heard of would be MERS. MERS stands for Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. So this is also a coronavirus. It was first reported in Saudi Arabia in 2012 and luckily was much less deadly than SARS or the current coronavirus. It only actually affected two patients in the United States, and they were healthcare workers that had traveled to Saudi Arabia. So it's believed that they contracted the disease there and they both survived. Um, about 80% of the cases of MERS actually occurred in Saudi Arabia. So where did these diseases come from? And where did coronavirus, COVID-19 come from? We have evidence to believe that SARS, um, SARS-CoV before 19, the original SARS outbreak came from civets, a type of cat, and MERS came through dromedary camels. But the ultimate original animal to harbor those diseases was bats. What's interesting is that there is a bat coronavirus that has found to have 96.2% of the same genome sequence identity as the current COVID-19. We don't know if humans contracted this coronavirus directly from bats or more likely from a secondary animal that bats infected.
Wuhan, China does have a lot of open air markets for seafood, for animals, um, and that may have been the source, but still we don't know. It's really hard to track this kind of thing. Epidemiology is tough. So similar to the tiger being infected at the Bronx Zoo, we don't know for sure it came through a human. We suspect it, but could it have come directly from a bat? Possibly. We just don't know. There's so many unknowns and it's scary. It really is. The World Health Organization is continuing to put out more things. The Center of Disease Control is continuing to document. All of these organizations are doing their best, but we just don't know. We're in the middle of a really scary outbreak. People are having symptoms everywhere from as mild as they don't even realize they're sick to some pneumonia symptoms to death. It is a spectrum. So the, let me just pull up here. The um, studies that I wanted to just touch on, again, these are not yet peer reviewed, so they may not be as valid as, you know, a study that you would read otherwise in a medical journal, but they are pending um, peer review. The first one evaluated the ability for dogs, pigs, chickens, ducks, ferrets, and cats to contract COVID. They, the experimenter, the researchers actually intranasally inoculated these animals. And then at a later date, it was a terminal study. They euthanized these animals to collect different tissues from their bodies and determine were they positive. They found that cats and ferrets in their respiratory centers, so they checked all different organs, but they found that cats and ferrets could contract COVID-19. Did they develop clinical signs? Not proven. Two ferrets in their study were found to have fevers and have a slightly reduced appetite, but it wasn't tested. Um, they weren't tested for other causes of fever and reduced appetite. Those are very vague symptoms. Cats in the study, it didn't mention them having any clinical signs, but what they did note is in cats specifically, they placed cats that were not inoculated with virus in the same area as cats that were, and those cats were also euthanized. They tested their samples and said, that the cats that were not experimentally inoculated also contracted COVID-19. So that's really scary. If cats can transmit it between themselves, um, that could be scary. Could they transmit it to humans as well? The one other study I wanted to touch on was also looking at cats. And let me pull it up here. It looked at cats in Wuhan, China with 102 sampled um, 102 sampled after the outbreak and 39 be before the outbreak to look at the natural coronaviruses that cats carry. Cats can get feline infectious peritonitis um, and that is a type of coronavirus that cannot be transmitted to humans and researchers wanted to see was that coming up as a false positive um, on these other coronaviruses and they found that there was no cross reactivity serologically or in the blood um, between SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus, COVID-19, or the feline infectious peritonitis. What's scary is this study, they found 14.7% 14 .7 of the samples from these cats after the outbreak were positive for COVID-19. So again, these studies haven't been proven to be valid, but it's some scary preliminary stuff. What can you do as a pet owner? Do not give up your cat or dog. Take precautions. This is something that, again, is constantly evolving. As we know more, I'll post more. I'll link, you know, these studies, these organizations. Stay in the loop. But what is continued to be supported by the World Health Organization is that if you have symptoms or a family member has symptoms, just like you would stay away from other humans, try to stay away from pets. So, again, never have we seen a cat or dog or other agricultural animal transmit the virus to humans, but we are starting to see the possibility of humans transmitting to certain animals. So avoid coughing on your pet, avoid sharing food. If you do interact with an animal, wash your hands before and after, just try to be safe. And remember too, if you're worried about cats now transmitting this infection, most of our cats live indoors. They're not running around meeting a lot of people. So the chance that they're carrying it is pretty low. If you're worried about your pets and any symptoms you're seeing, 
As always, please contact your veterinarian or go to a hospital to get them checked out. Just always call ahead. Thank you so much. Stay healthy.